Hello everyone, my name is Michael Schofield and I will be looking into Anthony McPartlin, also better known as Ant from Ant and Dick, and why he is now going to rehab for, as it's been reported, two months to battle alcohol and prescription drug abuse addiction. We know we're getting more of an idea that mental health issues really affect everything. We look, we've looked at for so long at physical diseases such as cancer, heart failure, strokes, and we've sort of understood them. Mental health issues, we're only really starting to appreciate that our brain is of course a physical entity. Millions, if not billions, of interactions and electrical, electrical processes going on and off and uh, the executive processes. If they go slightly wrong, if, you, if your genes are corrupted, not quite what well, they should be, combined with certain aspects in life, traumatic events, they can lead up to all kinds of mayhem, resulting in sometimes shooting up a school, suicide, or on a slightly lower level, but potentially just as destructive, addictions to all kinds of things. You can be addicted to everything, as we know. The spin that I'm going to be putting on this story with Ant is the particular issue of this celebrity and his apparently perfect life. Everything seemed fine, right? Ant Rant and Deck, one of the greatest TV partnerships we've ever seen in Britain. And my opinion, the two of them, Ant and Deck, are some of the best presenters we've ever, ever seen. They haven't received so many BAFTA awards for no reason, and uh, all you know, they've beaten all and sundry, including excellent presenters like Graham Norton. There's a reason why they're, they're at the top. They are so good. They hit all the demographics. They're cheeky, but they're not too dumbed down. Their comedy is actually pretty intelligent. They bounce off each other so well. So why uh, an apparent fall from grace? Hopefully they will come back up when Ant's out of rehab, he's hoping. But why does it sometimes affect, affect the likes of Tiger Woods? Some of these people you just really wouldn't suspect that things would go wrong for them. I think an aspect that people aren't really looking at, because we don't really see it as, as a, 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 an aspect, but especially for males, is that we create this society where we have to be perfect. Everything is great. You're always great, right? Look at everybody's Facebook uh, accounts. Twitter to a slightly less extent, that's more of a combative area, but you still get these same self-righteous views that you will have on Facebook. People love to brag. They love to put, uh, put out there that their relationships are amazing, that their job's fantastic, they're going places, their, their politics is perfect, and everything is wonderful, and they're all praying for people when things go wrong then they love everyone, everything's amazing. What are we having here? We are increasingly creating a religion of positivity, which is fine when you're actually positive and you're sort of classy about it. You don't need to just put it in everybody's faces all the time. If there's a homeless guy on the street, are you just going past going, ha 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 ha, I am so happy, I'm so happy. I think you'll, as you'll probably notice when you walk past that homeless person, do you try to look as happy as possible? No, you're somewhat respectful, hopefully. People don't necessarily want to see how amazingly happy you are all the time. <laughs> when you actually genuinely are, and you can't help it, that's, that's fine when you're properly happy. When you're properly laughing at something, instead of just forced laughter, you will laugh at it. There's no one saying you shouldn't be like that. But I think a society where we are saying that you have to be this perfect role model, especially for TV people, especially for an Ant and Dex starting on SMTV Live, or Bagger Grove, and then moving up to SMT, SMTV Live with all the kids, and they've always been for a family audience, there's an expectation of the way they should be. They always have to be cheeky chappies, they always have to be smiling and laughing, and we won't expect it, we won't uh, respect or accept anything less than that. That sort of system is just going to breed, especially if you are automatically uh, conducive to being addicted, if you've got an, an addictive personality, or if, you have, if you've had a bad, a bad upbringing, or quite frankly, if you're particularly intelligent. As Einstein said, it's very rare for a very intelligent person to be happy because you automatically are cursed with seeing all the crap that goes on and so you are sensitive to it. When you're at, that, at the sharp end of being a celebrity and you've achieved your dreams and you've done everything, you're a sportsman, you're a rock star, you've achieved, where do you go from there? Drugs, try to change the world, save the world. You, you're trying things here, there and everywhere and you are trying to be the best person, the best version of you all the time because that's what society expects of you, right? We expect everybody to be a role model now. It's never actually going to work. That's the trouble with this sort of society that we're pushing now. 
it is pretty insensitive to people that aren't having a great time in their lives and it's, it's unrealistic, it's fairly dumbing down. A well-rounded human being, as Einstein is alluding to, it, it has everything. They are not always happy. You can't always be happy. When you are properly, genuinely happy, when you are properly, genuinely sad, the emotions will come out and that is completely understandable. But by forcing a society, for, for forcing a culture, it's not really going to help. That is just going to create complexities. You're going to you're going to be thinking it had to be something when really your life's falling apart. And statement. His statement wasn't. Oh well, by the way, I've 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 been going down this bad path. I, haven't, I obviously haven't been throwing it in people's faces, but I've gone down this bad path, and I really need some help. He's straight away was saying, I feel like I've let people down. We've created this society now where someone as great as Ant. Manson Deck feels like he's letting his family and his, and his friends and, and his fans down because he's not being Ant. He can't always be Ant because sorry with his knee operation botch job and his awful addictions that have built up and up and up and his apparently not uh, inability to conceive with his wife of over 10 years. Sorry everyone. I'm feeling really mentally ill here, I, I need some help. No, he feels like he's letting people down. That's a societal failure, surely. We need to appreciate we're imperfect, especially if we have any form of mental illness, or we could be on the cusp of mental illness and then we take uh, one of these substances. The substances that he took were tramadol, oxycodone, and fentanyl. There are many others. Uh, it doesn't particularly matter what you're addicted to. If you are addicted, if you have an addicted personality, you're going to be in trouble with something sooner or later if some tr if some trauma affects you. Same as if you're a psych if you have certain genes or genetic you're genetically predisposed to being a psychopath. That in itself isn't everything. But if you then have traumas in your life that then unleash the beast, all hell breaks loose. And that's what that, the uh, knee injury for Ant that obviously seems to be what has caused this for Ant. But I'm looking at more than just the actual diseases and the effects of addiction but on that society needs to quite frankly grow up and push past this religion of positivity which actually there's no evidence that that actually helps anything once again if we just push forward that we're all amazingly happy all the time that's what if you're not feeling happy <laughs> you're going to think that you're letting all of society down you're letting yourself down why can't you be like this? Some people automatically have a personality where they are sunny all the time, and that in itself is also fine because you're being authentic. Surely we should promote that though. We should promote a society that values authenticity and whatever your personality is, we have different body types, we have different tastes in all kinds of issues and forms of entertainment and food. All these things we tend to respect, differences in food and music and religion. But when it comes to our actual personalities, we're all expected to conform and fit into a box. And if you say anything that rocks the boat, that goes against the status quo, you're wrong, you're somehow hateful. Absolutely not necessarily so, especially seeing as all the great advancements over the years, over the centuries, have been when people with true integrity, rebellious people, have pushed against the status quo and have pushed things forward. We have always, in a way, had this idea of positivity. Most societies have an idea that you need to conform to this way. You've usually been religious societies, but it's usually you do this, you don't do that, and then everything will be amazing, you go to heaven, and if you don't, you go to hell, and it'll be awful. You must do this. Um, but the evidence has been, when the more you push that, especially with the greater understanding that we're getting, especially in the Western world, but it's spreading throughout the world, uh, of greater quality of life, of secularization, truly different philosoph philosophical uh, values, when, with our greater understanding with these things, we're not being as tied down to old manners of old ways of thinking. So when those old ways of thinking look to push against you, you push back against them. And sometimes you might push too far and you go to breaking point. Sometimes people really do lose their minds. Why don't we do, look to work with people? Why don't we stop expecting everybody to be perfect? Have, have ideas of ways of being, uniform ways of being, not saying we shouldn't have that, but insofar as being nice to each other on the street being respectful, having manners, but when it actually comes to when we're speaking things, when we're doing anything, when we're, when we're at work, when we're entertaining, whatever it might be, when we're trying to be funny, we move the level that we're expected to way up. 
so that we're not just expected to have this uniform personality that generally we do and say the same sort of thing, that we can actually respect that we are properly different and that we properly come at things from different ways, but that we expect uh, a greater standard of entertainment, a greater standard of intelligence and analysis, which will rock the boat. We appreciate and enjoy those differences. Some celebrities preach this sort of thing, but what they really mean by different differences are different clothes, a new hairstyle, push against a straight white old male norm of everybody has to wear a suit looks the same. That's a start, but then they, they, they quickly fall into everybody has to be this version of different. So they're really philosophically very close to the system that they're actually uh, going against. We all need to look different, but then you're all really looking the same. <laughs> Hipsters, emo people, goth people, celebrity people, whatever you might be, all these people who are looking to be different, different hairstyles, different colours, whatever it might be, you're all still not doing it particularly for yourself and to, to, to back up your own difference, you're doing it to fit in with the other different people. <laughs> you're conforming to a non-conformity. Have some integrity for yourself. Society needs to push this, educational systems need to push this, and that you can be properly different with your words. Look different as well, that's fine, but don't just think that because you look different or sound different that that means you are actually different, that there's actual diversity going on here. No, we tend to just like when everybody pretty much says the same sort of things, otherwise we, go, we jump up in furious outrage. We're creating too much stress, and people who are conducive to feeling that stress, who have addictive personalities, who are going through bad times, that can just push them off the end because they feel like they can't be talking to society. Especially if you're in the public eye, they feel like they, they don't really have the place anymore. They're, they're, they're off the spectrum. And this is the same for a lot of people who are, who are addicted. I've seen it. They withdraw. They can't be with society because society won't understand them. Some areas might empathise and be nice, but they might overdo that. Addicted people don't necessarily want endless pity. They want to be treated like a regular human being, but just want it to be uh, want to the mental illness in a way that a disabled person does. They want their uh, drawbacks to be taken into account. You can still and should make fun of disabled people as you would anybody else, but then you just have to take into account where they might be able to not walk, for example. Just take these things into account. Don't pity. Take them into account. Treat them like regular human, human beings. Understand that they, they are coming at things from a different perspective here with a mental illness. Treat what needs to be treated. Don't expect though that, we, that everybody has to come at things from a uniformed way. That will just make them less likely to seek help in the first place. They think that you don't understand them. And even if that's true, you can't properly empathise with them. What kind of a system is that where we are expecting you to be this version of happiness? that they can't be understood because they aren't fitting into this this religion of positivity now. It's actually very dumbing down, very divisive. It's not particularly helping. For a time it can help. Crisis of confidence. Of course, if you just push yourself forward, have that great um, you know, evangelical version of positivity push, to push yourself forward, that's fine. But to consistently demand that of yourself and other people is unrealistic and can be counterproductive. We are animals, we are imperfect, we don't know what the future holds. We don't know what we're doing ourselves most days. <laughs> Every day we encounter things that we absolutely could not have expected or predicted. Why are we demanding perfection from ourselves? Don't demand perfection, per perfection from Anton Deck. Don't demand that, your, that their politics should be the same as yours. Don't demand that they all have to fit into this role model thing and that tr true diversity is just how different looks because it isn't truly good diversity surely is bumping up the standards of, of discourse, of different opinions, of appreciating the prodigies and geniuses when they come forward with their uh, ways that we can move forward or quite frankly comedians and with the, the sharp eyes that they have on certain areas of politics, life, and philosophy, or just regular people like me shouting at a camera, who knows, maybe enhancing discourse somewhat. I, have, I don't have any particular qualifications for doing this, but there are plenty of hidden gems out there for one reason or another. I'm not amazingly in the public eye. They're not a Stephen Molyneux. They're not a Richard Dawkins or a Christopher Hitchens. 
but they still might have something to give. But some areas of society again say you shouldn't be doing that because you haven't earned the right to be on a platform. But hey, logic is logic. Science is science. If you make sense, it doesn't really matter from where you come from. Don't demand that you have to fit into a certain box. Don't expect that you have to be a certain way. Don't expect it of anyone else. Don't expect that you are going to, going to agree with anyone all the time. Don't deify anyone. Agree and disagree with everyone in equal measure, depending on whatever subject they're on, whatever they're doing. But for God's sake, let's stop expecting the world from politicians. For God's sake, let's stop expecting the world from celebrities. They can't give it. <laughs> They've gone down the path of celebrity stardom. They want to save the world now. In a way, they're, they're pretty damaged human beings. They're, they're, they don't really understand their place in anything anymore. You can see, I've seen it with some YouTubers where they get to a level of fame where their personality drastically changes and now they think they're going to save the world. Ambition to do that's fine, but the trouble with the ambition of wanting to save the world is that you think you actually can very <laughs> pretty quickly. You've got all the answers. Which moves back to the system where ultimate positivity. We all have the answers. And if you don't join us, you, you really don't know how the answers. We're all perfect, you're not. Even our imperfections, we, we say they're great because they're, they fit in with our narrow model of the way that everybody should be. Well, newsflash, we are all imperfect. Don't tell everybody all our secrets. We're all messed up in all kinds of ways. The nature of our complex brains means we can and will do all kinds of messed up things from time to time. Instead of just having a society that hides those things away, why don't we just bring them all out into the open? Make fun of them, make sense of them. Uh, make way and understand the top demand that everybody be perfect. Let's understand that everybody can be human and with an amazing spectrum of good, bad, evil, ugly, beautiful.